All right, what is good, gang? This is your boy Mel, aka Naldo Formula One, and you are now tuned into the Naldo F1 podcast. This is episode 21. What's up, my cheese? Man, I missed you guys, bro. It's been entirely too long since the last time I was in front of the camera behind uh, the podcast mics. I know we're trying to get podcast mics up out of here, but at least I'm not talking about none of like the relationship and like alpha male, high value man, how value woman nonsense that's been going around uh, on social media and through these podcasts and DSPs and YouTube and all that jazz. But I am happy to be back, man. I'm, I'm excited. It's 2024. It's a new year, first week of the year. And I'm absolutely gassed, man, to bring you guys new content, keep it fresh. And yeah, get straight to the business, bro. Uh, let's go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way. If uh, you're not following or subscribed to the YouTube channel, wherever you're listening to this on, or if you're watching this, then go ahead and just just click the button, man. Click the the YouTube sub- YouTube subscribe button. Uh, hit the follow or subscribe button on your DSPs. Uh, like the the episode, man. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Let me go know what you guys want me to talk about next. And yeah, follow me on all my socials, man, at Naldo underscore underscore Formula One. Uh, actually, Naldo underscore underscore F1 to be exact. And it'll pop up, man. You guys know my iconic purple, man. You 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 see the you see you see me, man. You know where to find me. So yeah, man. Let go ahead, and knock that out. Just pause the video real quick. Go ahead, do that, or pause the audio and come back to me. I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys for doing that, man. It it means a lot. We're trying to grow this channel. I got big plans this year, and I want to get to. I want to say five k, five k subscribers, and um, I'll come up with a download figure, but a nice little download figure by the end of the year. I think that's a a lofty goal, but I think it's attainable, man. I think the content is there. I think the vision is there. F1 is a hyperactive growing sport and it's only getting bigger. And so I'm excited, man, to, to be covering it all for you guys and bring you guys up to speed, man. No pun intended. So man, let's get into it, bro. It's been a lot going on since the end of the season. Um, it was, I'm just going to keep it a buck with you guys. It was a grueling season for me, man. Even as somebody who's a fan of the show, or I said of the show, of the product that is F1 and the sport. But it was it was a tough season to watch. It was very monotonous and daunting to just sit back and hear that Dutch national anthem every single weekend. And now don't get me wrong, like I, I miss it. I miss it dearly and I want it to come back and I can't wait till it comes back but it was a lot for me to watch watching Max win week after week after week and credit to him man he's doing his job and he did great this season and he was by far in a way the best driver of the season but that doesn't make it any easier for me like to watch and I think even Red Bull fans will tell you that it was just not as entertaining as you would like um, out of an F1 season, especially coming off the back of 2021, of course, when we had that epic title battle. And then 2022, where even for at least for the first half of the season, we had title battles and we had other teams winning races uh, last year. So we had Mercedes that won a race in Brazil. Ferrari won four races last year. Um, it's a shame. I, I say I feel like I say this all the time. I've tweeted it a bunch of times. It is an absolute shame that Ferrari only won four races in 2022 with that car that they had. It just it doesn't make any sense to me. They threw away so many opportunities last year, and they should have been right there in the title fight up to the end. But they just they couldn't do it. They were just doing Ferrari things, man, and it, it drove me up an absolute wall. But um, yeah, transitioning man into like last season and um drivers ratings and stuff like that man that brings us into list season man we are in list season for music for sports um content like 
fashion, all that. It's list season right now. The end of the year, transitioning into the beginning of the year, everybody wants to go back and review, like, oh, who had the best, um, like, the, the best XYZ, or who had the best, like, album of the year, or who had the best... Um, Jesus, hold on. Let me find my damn window. Um, God, dog. My bad. My bad, y'all. I was trying to pull up my damn uh, browser window, and it popped up on my secondary display instead of in front of me where I needed it to pop up, but that's my fault, y'all. Um, lost, completely lost my damn train of thought. Um, oh, we were talking about list. List. Uh, it's list season, so top albums of the year, top movies of the year, top TV shows of the year. It, it, it was just a lot, man. And um, I... I it was no different for F1. F1, uh, the drivers actually came out with their top 10 drivers of the season for this past year, 2023. And then the team principals came out, I think, like a week later with their top 10 drivers of the season. And they were a lot different than I expected them to be, to be honest. And I, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. So um, I'll just go through uh each list and then kind of give you my feedback at the end and so the drivers top 10 at number 10 they had sergio perez uh red bull at number nine they had pierre gasly from alpine at number eight they had oscar piastri from mclaren rookie number seven they had alex albon from williams at number six and five they had carlos Sainz and charles leclerc the two ferrari drivers respectively number four they had lando norris number three they had fernando alonso number two lewis hamilton and number one max verstappen no surprises there um and then as far as the team principles this is kind of where it was very just confusing i guess is the best word uh very confusing i think that the biases came into play and I'll get it, I'll touch on this a little bit later but I think that the team principals feelings and relationships about certain guys kind of came into play when doing their rankings and I think the drivers were to be honest a little bit more objective which is a little bit surprising because you would think that the drivers were these guys are rivals you're racing against these guys you're battling them hard you may feel the type of way about a dude personally so you'd be like mm, I ain't, I don't really fuck with him like that let me drop him down a little bit even though I think he's a better driver than such and such but the team principals rankings were number 10 Sergio Perez so the same as the driver's list. Number nine, George Russell, who wasn't on the driver's list. Uh, number eight, Alex Albon, who was one spot down from where he was on the driver's list. Number seven, Oscar Piastri, who was one spot up. So they flip-flopped from one list to the other. Number six, Carlos Sainz was in the same spot. Number five was Lewis Hamilton, which was shocking, like to say the least. Number four, Charles Leclerc. Number three, Lando Norris. Number two, Fernando Alonso. And number one, Max Verstappen. So just at a quick glance, like these lists are, I think they're okay. But when you really get to breaking it down, like, I mean, the one that stands out, we're just going to, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. It's Lewis Hamilton. How is I don't understand how Lewis Hamilton goes from being rated the second rated driver of the season by his peers, the drivers, to being down to number five by the team principals. Like it's just it gets me thinking about agendas and like how XYZ feels about Lewis Hamilton and for whatever reason, again, back to what I said, um, 
I think in the last podcast and on Twitter, I've said it numerous amounts of times, the fact that we don't know these people in real life. So this is all speculation, but from what he puts out to the world, it seems like great guy, philanthropist, entrepreneur, bunch of business ventures, seems like a genuinely nice person. And so it's like what I'm trying to figure out what would make them want to put him so low based on his performance. I mean, he finished P3 in the driver's championship, probably the most consistent driver on the grid for the whole season outside of Max Verstappen. And in a Mercedes car that didn't win any races this year, and at the time, at times in the season, looked like the fourth best car on the grid behind Red Bull, Ferrari, Aston, and McLaren at times. And he still found ways to put it in positions that it may not have necessarily deserved to be in. I mean, look at the points difference between him and George and the results difference. Now, it was very close in qualifying between those two. But as far as when it matters on Sunday, Lewis put in the performances across the board. And if he wouldn't have gotten disqualified in in um, in Austin, then who knows what like how high he could have been. He could have potentially beaten Sergio Perez or P2 in a car that didn't win any races. So, I mean, it, it, I don't I don't really get that. And I mean, you can say it's my biases, but I don't even understand how you can say Lando is above him when Lando only had the car to perform in the second half of the season. I mean, I think I think of you would say recency bias comes into mind, but then you have Fernando at 2 who the car was only there for the first half of the season. Aston tailed off and kind of fell off as the season started to end, and they didn't look as good as they did before either. So that doesn't really make any sense to me. And so I'm just racking my brain trying to figure out why, how you land on this, and I genuinely don't know how you get to uh, to Charles Leclerc. And I love Charles. He's probably my second favorite driver on the grid. But... How you get to putting him above Lewis doesn't make any sense. I mean, Charles had a pretty tough season. I mean, he was barely beating Carlos for the first half of the season. And so I don't, and didn't get a win this season. Lewis didn't get a win either, obviously. But I think Lewis had more podiums, obviously finished higher in the driver's championship in a car that was a lot slower at times. I mean, Ferrari won a race this season. Uh, Charles had a couple pole positions this season. And um, at the end of the season, look, they Ferrari looked like the second best team on the grid. So I don't really understand. Um, and I don't think at any point in the season, other than maybe the first handful of races, were Mercedes ever a clear cut number two. Like in the season, the beginning of the season, and honestly, the beginning of the season, it was Aston. I mean, Aston, at least in the hands of Fernando, Aston was right there every single race for the first like four or five races of the season. So Mercedes were never really a clear cut number two, but Lewis found a way to be best of the rest as far as anybody outside of Red Bull in the driver standings. So that's my rant on that. Um, how you put George in the top 10, I don't get at all. George had a really, really tough season. I mean, he was really good in qualifying and pretty much matched Lewis, which is always an accomplishment, uh, considering how well Lewis has been able to qualify, despite the fact that Lewis has come out and said that the past two seasons have been his worst seasons of his career as far as qualifying, and that's something that he's looking to focus on moving into 2024. Um, But, I mean, George put it in the wall a couple of times, cost himself big points, specifically Singapore, when you crash out on the last lap because you clipped the wall with your uh, rear right tire. So that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me how he cracks the top 10 over somebody, um, over like Gasly, who had a surprise podium this year and really performed really well in Alpine, to be honest, considering the fact that this is a brand new team. And there was no clear-cut number one driver dynamic between him and Esteban. And we didn't know how that dynamic was going to work in general because they just don't really like each other that much. And um, I listened to a podcast that Esteban did not not too long ago 
and he kind of talked about the fact that him and Pierre basically just only have a working relationship, which I can respect. Like, you don't always have to be best friends with your coworkers. It just has to be able to be productive for the betterment of the organization. But still, I, it, I think that Pierre had a really good season, especially to come in there and beat Esteban. And I think he trounced him in qualifying, too, if I'm not mistaken. So that kind of – the fact that they put George in there just – shocks me a little bit but hey it is what it is um and to be honest i feel like i need to talk about it but like it i I, list annoy me because and i know i've done them in the past so this kind of sounds a little hypocritical coming from me but list kind of annoy me because it, it just we put so much stock into them when it's clear that everybody's just gonna naturally have biases like based on who you like who you don't like who you root for who you don't root for we all have biases and it's okay it's just a part of being human but it it, we put so much stock into these lists and like I I was literally just having this conversation on the phone a little earlier and it's like why do we as a society like care so much about what random people think about the things that we're passionate about especially when it becomes like opinionated like with most which most of these lists are opinionated granted sports are a little easier to rank because there's stats and results to prove it but when you consider something like music where it's all opinionated like we care so much about these lists like a top 10 album list like oh you like benny the butcher's album but i like drake's album and like but so I think Drake sucks and you think I mean, Butcher sucks and it's like, okay, whatever. Um, it's all opinionated anyway. So what does it really matter? And that's the, I guess my list rant because the list season just starts to get annoying after a while because it's just all opinionated, right? Like I could redo this list right now and there's going to be a bunch of people out in the world that think would think my list is shit so i'm over here ranting about the list but it's all opinionated at the end of the day because it's just what you value do you value qualifying do you value race results um how many do podiums count how much do you factor in how good the car is based on like or where their teammate is and so it just it's all opinionated man um and this it gives us something to do during the winter break, to be honest. Like, that's really just all it is. It just gives us something to do and something to talk about. And But, I mean, there's plenty of other things to do during the winter break. So I, I kind of – that was one of my talking points. I kind of wanted to give people something to do to stay connected to F1 during the winter break, even though it's a really short off season by sports standards when you consider the fact that we're only off for, like, three and a half months, I think. I mean, when you consider like football, basketball, like football ends in February, doesn't come back until September. Basketball ends in June. It doesn't come back till late October, early November. Um, baseball ends in October and comes back, what, in February, I think? So um, February or March, something like that. And... So it's a really short off season, so I'm like complaining. I know I put out TikTok the other day, uh, with the meme talking like about being sad that we've a month and some change removed from the F1 season, but it feels like it's been forever. Like I feel like it's been a pretty long time since uh, I've seen any racing, and it it pains me a little bit. I don't wake up on Sunday morning with the same amount of energy and like I guess joy. Uh, that I used to get during like the F1 season despite the fact that a lot of it was pain depending on who you're cheering for basically if you're a non-Max Verstappen fan it was a lot of pain this season Um, but there's plenty to do during the winter break to keep busy I know one thing that I wanted to do personally and that I recommend doing is going back and watching old classic like F1 seasons so like the old like Michael Schumacher title battles or like the Senna Prost rivalry battles, um, like Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen, um, the 20, I want to go back and watch the 2016 season again, uh, with the Rosberg and Hamilton title fight when Lewis lost the title fight to, to, to Nico. Um, I want to go back and watch like 
the 2017 and 18 season again with the Ferrari and Mercedes uh, rivalry, especially for the first half of the season. When I think 2017, Ferrari was a lot closer to Mercedes, and I think that title battle is closer than a lot of people like to remember. Um, or even like the 2008 season, uh, Lewis's first championship when it came down to the last lap, 2007 rookie Lewis, Lewis's rookie season when he only lost the championship by one point and tied with his teammate Fernando Alonso, who was a two-time world champion at the time. I mean, there's just plenty of seasons out there. And I do have a source for that. If you want to go back and watch old seasons of F1, I'll just either drop the link in the comments or in the description below or just hit me up personally. Um, it's one of those. So if you know, you know. I'll send it to you, but that's kind of something that I kind of want to do, at least watch two or three seasons worth of races before we get back going in um, Bahrain in March. Um, it's, and it's not only list season, but as far as this is, this one's kind of specific to F1, but it's um, theoretical lap time and wind tunnel season. So the teams have been working hard this off season, trying to get their cars together for next season and so they're doing obviously doing a lot of wind tunnel testing, um, a lot of simulator work, trying to get see what their pace is for next season. And geez, excuse me. Um, and it's list season. It's it is theoretical list and wind tunnel season where, like, I think Ferrari put out an article saying that they've gained thirty percent more downforce in the wind tunnel, and it's like, oh, brother. Like, we don't want to hear any of this. I personally, I think it's hilarious, but I also just genuinely don't care. Like, none of those numbers mean anything to me until we get going in Bahrain. Really, even test up until testing, because teams like to sandbag in testing. They don't want to show their hand too early because they don't want guys going back and copying their car designs or changing things up last minute before the season starts. And so... Uh, until qualifying in Bahrain, we really don't know what's what as far as who's on pace to do what during the season. Like, I think Mercedes, or at least, maybe not Mercedes, but Total Wolf came out and said that they're putting out really good lap times on the simulator and that their wind tunnel data looks good. Now, I am hopeful because they brought back James Allison as the technical director who, if you don't know who James Allison is, he was the technical director pretty much all of Mercedes constructors championship seasons. And so they changed technical directors between the 21 and 22 season. And just saying had a championship worthy car in 21 and the eight years before that. And then 2022 and 2023, when they brought a new technical director, the car is shit. So I'm not putting the blame on a sole person, but you are responsible at the end of the day for the production of the car and the results of the car. So, yeah, bring back James Allison, and I'm really hopeful for this next season with him being the lead guy and designing the car because he's another one of those ones. Like, he's right up there with Adrian Newey as far as great car design and being one of the ones as far as car design. So I'm, I'm really hopeful for this upcoming season that we will get a closer fight. Even if Mercedes doesn't win or Lewis doesn't win the championship, at least give me a couple races. Give me two, three race victories, something to give me hope that they're, they're, they're inching closer to competing for that title. And who knows, maybe 2025, the year before the new regs come, we'll get a title battle again and we can get uh, Max versus Lewis 2.0. And hopefully this one goes differently. I'm confident that it will. If Lewis has the car, I'm pretty confident that he's going to he's going to perform and put in the results. Um but yeah, I, overall I'm just I don't want to hear the theoretical lap times and wind tunnel cuz none of that means anything. It's like 30% more than what than last year. Yeah, so is everybody else. Everybody else is improving too. So it's just how much more can you improve than the guys around you? So it's like, yeah, we may be 30% better, but if we were already 60% behind Red Bull and then Red Bull gets 30% better, we didn't make up any difference. Or if we're on average four tenths behind Red Bull in qualifying and we gain three tenths in the wind tunnel, 
but Red Bull gains another two tenths in the wind tunnel. You're still three tenths behind Red Bull, so it doesn't really make a difference. So none of that. I wouldn't read too much into any of that. Just wait and see in Bahrain, and the hey, the the track don't lie. So lap times do not lie. Um, drivers have been staying busy this off season or not. Some have been pretty chill uh, as far as like what they're doing. Some people. It's interesting to see how drivers approach. The winter break, some of them like to really relax and get their mind away from from racing. Like Lewis and George and Charles have been traveling a lot and doing other activities. Lewis likes to, I know he likes to surfboard and like extreme sports. He had this like skydiving video that was nuts. Like he was holding on to the side of the plane like uh, Tom Cruise and I forgot which uh mission impossible that was there's been far too many of those but one of the mission impossible movies you know which one i'm talking about um he was like holding on to the side of the plane before he jumped off like that dude was a psychopath i know mercedes is like sweating every single time he like does any of that stuff because like jesus christ we don't want our star to get himself injured or potentially something fatal happen and so i know toto sees those videos and he kisses his teeth every single time uh fernando and max have ironically enough i think they're probably racers in the purest sense of the word like they have just been still racing so fernando uh there was a clip of him out there racing and i know he's done other racing series before so he likes to stay in the groove of things and max as well max has his own racing team with like gt cars so he was running and testing uh their ferrari 296 gt uh three car so it seems like those two are staying in the groove of being behind the wheel and i respect that max has also done a couple simulator events and like i racing online stuff and he just strikes me as somebody who's really a true like die hard racer like he wants to be in the car no matter what kind of car it is um, some drivers strike me as like, oh, we're in Formula One and I'm a Formula One driver and that's it. And there's others who are like, yeah, you know, I think I'll go ahead and try NASCAR. I'll go ahead and try endurance racing or uh, rally or I don't even I don't think any F1 drivers are transition to rally. Those guys are built different. Rally drivers are nuts. If you've ever seen like clips of rally drivers those dudes be flying and they get airtime and they just they are sending it with no fear those guys got like balls of steel bro i i don't know how they do it um but yeah speaking of other things to do in the off season those that's another thing to put on your list is watch other racing series man there's some good racing series out there that are still going um nascar indycar uh, again, rally, rallying is crazy. Uh, the uh, WEC season, the hypercar endurance racing season is just getting kicked off. Um, those cars are also insane. The prototype cars, nuts. GT3 racing is usually always on uh, at some point or another. MotoGP, man, those guys are crazy too. So there's plenty of ways to stay locked in for all my gearheads out there who are really interested in racing there's more than enough racing series to go around and keep you busy until uh, the season comes back around um or you could just keep it simple man and watch drive to survive go back and watch drive to survive i would suggest season one or two me personally those are the best seasons in my opinion three and four just kind of you lose me a little bit um Season one and two really give you a good representation of what Formula One is and adds a little bit of drama and spice in there just to keep it interesting, uh, just for a little razzle-dazzle. Um, and speaking of Drive to Survive, should be coming soon. Usually, I think it comes out like the weekend before F1 starts. And I think I feel like they announced it already. Um, drive, let's check. Drive, Jesus, I can't type. To survive season five. Season six. It is coming, yeah, February 23rd, so the weekend before uh, the F1 season opens up. Uh, the Drive Survive season will release, 
And that's always it's always something to watch. So and I mean, hell, content as far as like TV shows is kind of dead right now. I have some shows on my watch list and stuff like that, but I've just it's been grueling trying to get through it to be honest. Like nothing I think with this writer slash actor strike, it just has lost my nothing's really piqued my interest enough for me to be locked in. Like me and my fiance were watching suits and we've kind of gotten to the point to where it's dragging and like we know we need to finish it and we're so close to the end of of the series or at least what they finished putting out before they canceled it because I think they canceled it before it actually came to a like decisive ending. But yeah, it's it's just become daunting at this point and we're trying to just grind it out and like get through it, but I, who knows, man. We'll see. Um but yeah, Drive to Survive will be coming on the 23rd, but I don't really know if it has the same juice that it used to like if drive to survive just hit a little different during Kobe when we were all stuck at home and there was nothing to watch. And I didn't even, I've never heard of drive to survive before, before COVID. So I'm just scrolling through Netflix and like, I'm, I just see formula one pop up and I'm like, Oh shit. I, I like formula one. Like I, this is cool. Click on it, watch it. And I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. And yeah, it like, I think that sparked, the diehard fan in me um to where i'm like i'll get up in the morning watch every race and like i keep up with the standings i got driver standings and statistics popped up on my home screen of the laptop and on the phone i get the, the notification text alert that come through for whatever's new in formula one now i'm like it's become my favorite sport and i'm kind of shocked i never thought anybody would take the place of basketball but who knows but i just now I kind of don't know if Drive to Survive has the same juice that it did before. And maybe that's just me becoming a little jaded to it. I mean, you guys got to watch it and let me know what you think about it and how it's changed from season one to now we're in season six of Drive to Survive. But, I mean, I'm still kind of looking forward to it. I kind of want to see what storylines they come up with like the rise and fall of McLaren and the fall and or the rise and fall of Aston Martin and the fall and rise of McLaren and how they kind of swapped like McLaren were nowhere at the beginning of the season then by the end of the season they're the second best team clear cut and then Aston were the second best team clear cut and then by the end of the season they're nowhere and they just kind of flip-flopped and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me um Oscar Piastri's rookie season, I want to get a lot of behind the scenes on that. Um, he had a great rookie season. I think the only rookie to get a podium since Lewis Hamilton, and ironically enough, Oscar got, what, one or two podiums, and Lewis had like seven in his rookie season. So that just goes to show the greatness of um, like Lewis Hamilton. And like Oscar had a fantastic season, and then there's just like there's levels to this. Um. yeah man so drive to survive we'll see what happens I don't think it's going to be that interesting but fingers crossed I am hopeful but yeah let's talk about 2024 man in, in March and what we can got, look, got to look forward to this coming up season Um, I mean the question everybody wants to know is will anybody catch Red Bull and I guess my answer to that is Yes and no. I think we will see other teams win races next year. I don't think anybody's going to beat Red Bull like as far as the Drivers' Championship or the Constructors' Championship. I think Ferrari will probably win a race or two next year. I think Mercedes will win a race next year, at least one. And I think McLaren will finally, finally get another race victory. I mean, I say finally like they didn't win a race in uh, 2021. But um, who knows, man? We'll see. But I, I am hopeful that other teams will win races. I think as these regs, as the teams start to understand these regulations and what these new cars are capable of, I think that gap starts to get closer and closer. Like, I think Red Bull will still be improving and they'll still be the best team. But I think that now with James Allison back and 
uh, McLaren starting to get a grip on their chassis and their car and Ferrari understanding their car a little bit more. I think we'll see other teams win races next year. But again, I think it'll still be Red Bull for the most part. So to answer the question, yes and no. I think the gap will be smaller and I think that other teams will succeed at other tracks. But overall, I think it's still going to be a lot of Red Bull victories next season. Um, another thing to talk about for next year is the fact that there's no rookies on the grid, which is pretty weird. It's the first time in F1 history that we will have no rookies on the grid. And I don't really know how I feel about it. Like there are a lot of prospects out there um, that might deserve a spot in F1 that aren't getting one. Um, but like tail poor share off the rip um, that I'm trying to think of. And I, I'm, I don't really keep up with F2 too much. That's one thing I do want to start doing into this next year is paying a little bit more attention to F2 and like the feeder series and stuff. I know um, Ali Bierman is coming up. He's a big prospect coming up. And there's a, um, there's another guy who's supposed to be like his rival or whatever. I can't remember his name, but he's on the way up as well. And so there should be some prospects coming through the pipeline in the future, but for next year, nobody. And there are kind of some guys that could go and we wouldn't really miss them. I think like off the rip, I think of guys like Lauren or I said Lawrence, Lance Stroll, if he left the grid, would anybody miss him? Uh, I, in a way, I like the fact that Williams gave Logan Sargent another season, to try to prove himself, but he got absolutely trounced by um by Alex this year and I wouldn't have felt a way if they dropped him over it and like to be honest like I he probably deserved to be dropped especially with how much he crashed the car I think that was more important than the fact that he wasn't quick it was the fact that he wasn't quick and he kept crashing the car so I'm kind of shocked that they brought him back um I'm trying to think um Joe Alpha had a tough season I'm I wouldn't have been surprised if they let him go, but he, I think he brings in a lot of money for the team as far as like corporate sponsorships and stuff like that. Um, Botas was solid, but again, the car was nowhere. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of drivers who I think would have, nobody really would have really missed, but it is what it is. I understand keeping the consistency and wanting to develop these cars with guys who are familiar with the car. Um, so thinking about like the opposite of any is anybody gonna catch Red Bull? Is anybody gonna fall off? Like I'm actually gonna go out on a limb and say Aston aren't gonna be there nowhere near where they were this past season. Like as far as Fernando putting in all regular podiums, my expectations for Lance are in the toilet basically, but I just uh my expect like I don't think Aston are gonna be there next year I just don't I don't see them after they're tailing off at the end of the season and everybody else is improving over the off season I don't really see how they rebridge that gap back to where they were I think they had a real advantage at the beginning of the season and they weren't able to develop and that's the the real key to a uh, successful F1 team is not <laughs> excuse me, is not how well can you start the season, but is it can you develop throughout the season? Because everybody's getting better throughout the season, and are you able to keep up? And Aston wasn't really able to keep up throughout the second half of the season. They had some moments like Fernando in Brazil was right up there, but overall that whole second half of the season was really tough on them. Um, I think McLaren will be back where they were. Um competing with Ferrari and, and Mercedes as the second best team. Um, Alpine are kind of in no man's land right now. Who We don't really know what to think of them at the moment. So I don't know. They might improve, but I don't see them cracking that top four, top three. Um, yeah, everybody else I think kind of stays put where they're at. Um, Williams could improve a little bit more, but again, by how much? Because, like, they're nowhere near the top four. But could they be the fifth best team on the grid? Maybe. Possibly. But I think that would take a lot. They need a lot more resources than they currently have right now. 
Same thing with like Haas. Haas has a good qualifying car they have had for the past couple of seasons, but as far as like the race pace, it's terrible. The car's terrible on tires, and they fell off a lot at the end of the season too. So who knows? Uh, yeah, I do have something big coming up that I want to introduce for this season, um, and that will be the Naldi Awards. So I'm going to come up with some really creative criterias of awards that I can give out to drivers, teams, fans, and you guys. And I want to actually keep record of of everything throughout the week. So over these next couple of weeks, I'm going to be thinking about categories and stuff that I can implement for my Naldi Awards at the end of the season. And at the end of 2024, we'll do a whole award ceremony and we'll we'll just see how it goes, man. But I'm really excited to bring that. That's something that I've been thinking about for a while. And I feel like I can come up with some really fun and interesting categories outside of like, oh, my driver of the year, the boring shit. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that guy to you guys. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm good, man. I don't really have anything else I really want to touch on. Uh this was a good one, man. I really enjoyed this episode, and I feel like that I was struggling to really find topics to talk about during the off season. But you know, I just decided that I wanted to sit in front of you guys and like just chat, man. Have it, keep it casual, man. Not really have to worry about covering so much. I kind of want to get away from coverage. I don't want it to. I don't want this to feel like news. I want it to feel like. Me and me and you guys are just in a bar, chilling, talking sports, shooting the shit, basically. So, yeah, man. If you guys have any questions, you know where to find me, man. Twitter, Instagram, the comments on this episode, whatever, man. Make sure you guys leave me a five star review. That would mean so much to me. Uh, get the algorithms going. If you don't, you're a hater. Just had to remind you guys. And yeah, man. I think that's it. I will see you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace.